Hi, my name is Tom Yintang, and I'm come from Team Kugrimer. I'm very glad here to present you our system for the Shimmy 6 challenge. The first part is front end processing. Since Shimmy 6 database uses a high amount of crosstalk, we use the baseline front end processing framework to reduce the crosstalk as much as possible. As shown in the figure, the multi array signal YTF is first filtered by a channel selection block, which selects channels of different arrays and combines them to form a multi channel signal. Then we apply multi channel deliberation based on weighted, weighted prediction error principle. Then, guided source separation algorithm, which exploits time activity and speaker annotation, is performed to provide necessary initialization information for the performing block. The time activity information alpha TK could be either provided by the time annotation or refined by non silence alignment generated by the ASR system. For training data, we have eight types of channel selections, two for the in-ear microphone data and six for the multiple array data. While for the test data, we have four types of channel selections for the multiple array data. As we can see in the right table, for in-ear microphone data, L stands for the label L stands for that only left channel is selected for each array, and the label L plus R stands for that both left and right channel are selected. For multiple array data, the label channel, channel 1 plus channel 4 stands for that only the first and last channel are selected for each array, and the label OR stands for that all channels are selected for each array. These different types of channel selections can greatly increase the diversity of the training data. The training data of our system consists of three types. The first one is original in-ear microphone data, which is denoted as data 1. The second part is the multiple array data with six types of channel selections after front end processing, along with speed perturbation and volume perturbation, which is denoted as data 2. The third part is in-ear microphone data with two types of channel selection after the front end processing, along with Speed perturbation, reverberation, simulation, and noise perturbation, which is denoted as data 3. While our test data is multiple array data with four types of channel selection up to the front end processing, the resulting four types of process data are decoded individually and fused together to get the final result at the test stage. This is the diagram of our training procedure. Up to the front end processing, the data augmentation is performed to increase the acoustic, the acoustic diversity of our training data. And then data cleanup is performed, and the data is then passed to the training block, which is trained by the native spring MMI criteria. And then it is fine tuned by discriminative training procedure using sequence minimal base Bayes risk criterion to get the final acoustic model. We first conducted an experiment to investigate how the training data could affect the performance. The acoustic model employs the baseline TDNF ar architecture. The input feature of the network is four-dimensional MMCC combined with 100-dimensional I-vector. The model is trained by the NetSpring MMI criterion. And the, left, the left table shows the result. As we can see, with data 1 and data 2, we can achieve a WER of 46.48 of on development set, while with data 1, data 2, and data 3, we can get better WER of 45.87 on development set, which is around 10% WER relative reduction over the baseline data. 
We also evaluated the performance of the four type network architecture. The baseline TDNF network, the TDNF network with 13 layers, the CNN TDN network with 11 CNN layers and 20 TDN layers, and the final CNN TDN LSTM network. The red table shows the results of different network architecture with both 93 MMI training criteria and SMBR training criteria. As we can see from the table, that CNN TDN model gets the best performance, achieving a WER reduction reduction about 1.4% over the baseline network architecture. We also found we also found that SMBR criterion could slightly improve the performance on all network ar architecture over the latest free MMI criteria. And as for the decoding, the left figure shows the diagram of our test procedure. We first do a one pass, a first pass decoding to produce an alignment of the test data and use it to refine the time activity at the front end system. Then a second pass decoding is performed. We produce four streams of test data using four types of channel selection, channel selection as, as described earlier. Then each of these four streams is, de is decoded individually using three types of network through post order average. Finally, minimum Bayes decoding is performed to combine the four decoding results to form the final result. The red table shows our decoding results. As we can see from the table, with, with the post over average and MBR decoding, we can achieve a WER of 37.59, which is a great increase over the baseline model. And we also trained a two layer STM we also trained two two layer STM language model with forward and backward directions uh, in the rescoring stage. The language models are used to rescore the nettes of the full string as we described uh, earlier. And finally, MBR decoding is performed to combine the four decoding results to form the fin final results. <coughs> the red table shows the result of the rescoring. As we can see that with rescoring, we can achieve a WER of 35.95 on development set. This page, this page shows our final results on development set and evaluation set. In category A, we achieved a WER of 37.59 and 38.99 on development set and evaluation set, while in category B, we achieved a WER of 35.95 and 37.45 on development set and evaluation set. And thanks for your lesson.